Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie Channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 8 which is all about human taxonomic rank. This will be the first quarter topic, week 6 and day 2. And this lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to. First is to explain the different ways mammals, including the humans, give birth and the evolutionary significance of these reproductive strategies. The second one is to collaborate with peers to determine the complete taxonomic classification of humans. And the third one is to appreciate the evolutionary process and diversity that have shaped the human species by answering the guide questions. For the explicitation, the students will watch the following videos. For the work example, the students will accomplish the human taxonomic rank, then allow the students to determine the taxonomic classification of humans and assess and evaluate their answers. For the first guide question, how do scientists group humans into different races or populations and what are the some problems with this approach? Historically, scientists have attempted to classify human population into different racial groups based on perceived physical differences such as skin color, facial features, and hair texture. This approach is problematic for several reasons. The concept of race is a social construct with no scientific basis. Genetic evidence shows that there is more than variation within so-called racial groups between them. Physical features used to define races are superficial and do not accurately reflect underlying genetic or biological differences between human populations. Classifying humans into rigid racial categories oversimplifies the complex history of human migration, admixture, and adaptation to diverse environments, ignoring the true diversity and fluidity of human populations. The use of race has been historically tied to systems of oppression, discrimination, and pseudo-scientific justifications for social inequalities, undermining our understanding of human diversity. For the second guide question, how has our understanding of human diversity changed over time and what role did new scientific discoveries play in this? So over time, our understanding of human diversity has undergone a specific transformation, largely driven by advancements in scientific research and the incorporation of new evidence. So early classifications of human races were based on superficial physical characteristics and reflected the biases and prejudices of the time rather than the scientific fact. The rise of the modern evolutionary theory and genetics has provided a more nuanced and evidence-based understanding of human origins, migration patterns, and the continuous spectrum of variation within our species. For question number three, how do genetics help us understand how humans are classified and related to each other?
So genetics has played a crucial role in shaping our understanding of human taxonomy and diversity. So genetic analysis of DNA sequences has allowed scientists to trace the evolutionary relationships between different human populations and our shared ancestry with other primates. For question number four, how does understanding human diversity helps us in medicine, anthropology, and public health? So in medicine, recognizing the genetic and physiological diversity within the human species can inform more personalized and effective approaches to disease treatment and prevention. And in the field of anthropology, a deeper understanding of human origins, migration patterns, and cultural adaptations can provide valuable insights into the complex history and development of human societies. In the public health, acknowledging and addressing the social, environmental, and biological factors that contribute to health disparities among diverse human populations can lead to more equitable and effective interventions, and this includes the identifying and addressing the root causes of health inequities, such as systematic discrimination and the lack of access to resources. Yes.